I feel like it's been pretty smooth. Um, the great part about the secondary group in years past was that uh, we had leaders. Like, obviously, we had guys like Chase and Jack, but we all held each other accountable. You know what I'm saying? There was no alpha. There was no guy that was above everyone else. You know, it was, you know, equal opportunity and, and equal accountability for everyone in the group from the beginning. You know what I'm saying? So uh, transitioning to a leadership role, per se, um, has been an easy transition. But my teammates hold me accountable just as much as I do them uh, throughout the entire program. So. Like it's been pretty dope. Hey Jordan, um, in, in terms of you know, with a guy like Chase and a guy like Jack, like what do you take from their games now that you're an upperclassman, whether it be on the field or or in that leadership role you mentioned? Um, from Jack, I would just say supreme confidence all the time. I always feel like you're the best football player in the room, no matter where you are, what room you're in. Um, and Chase, I would just say passion and love for the game. You know what I'm saying? It's Chase was so passionate. Obviously, you guys know getting to watch him for so many years, you know what I'm saying? He really just loved Arizona State, and he loved playing football. And uh, he approached working, and he approached every game uh, with that intent and with that in mind. So just taking those two things and trying to implement them each and every day, I think, has, has helped me a lot. Michael? Um, I feel like with uh, all the noise surrounding Arizona State, as far as everyone who's left either through the draft or through the transfer board or whatever, how does it, how do you do your job as a leader, both mentoring the younger guys on the roster and also trying to block out that noise as well? Yeah, um, all the noise and, and the, you know, surrounding uh, controversy surrounding the program, we haven't really let that infiltrate this building. It's always been about the people that are in the building, not the people who have left, you know, and those guys who have left, they're my brothers. I love them to death. They'll be my friends for the rest of my life. Um, but it's, it's about what's inside the building, you know what I'm saying? It's about what's in that weight room, working with us every day, what's in the meeting room with us every single day. And I like what we got. So it's been been smooth. Questions? Oh, go ahead. So Jordan, now that you had um, a whole uh, spring practice uh, with the, within defensive, defensive backs, Coach Fletcher, um, can you talk about how different has it been, um, you know, in 2022 versus your previous years at, at Arizona State? You know, I, I know every coach brings his own flavor. What kind of flavor does, does uh, Coach Fletcher bring to the table? Uh, coach Fletcher is just a real professional man, real professional, really passionate about his job. Uh, he does everything that he can, you know what I'm saying, to help us learn the defense, to give us tools and techniques to use out there, you know, on the field. Uh, he's a great man, great coach. I feel like I can talk to him about anything. Um, so I, I would say, you know, just through spring, it was a great experience, and I can't wait to learn more from him. Chris. Hey, Jordan, what what do you, you perceive your role to be this season? Because we've seen you play nickel in the past quite a bit and um, safety in, in, in spring and in some personnel groupings. And how, what does that sort of speak to what the overall nature of this uh, secondary and defense will be? Uh, I think we got a group of really versatile guys, you know what I'm saying, guys that don't necessarily have a, a one set position uh, like myself. You know, I play corner here, I play safety here, I play nickel here, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, seemingly nickel and safety is going to be my role this year. So, um, I'm, you know, just learning that, you know, getting ready to, to play those positions. But obviously I'm ready to play anywhere, much like everyone else in the secondary. Go ahead. Yeah, and and when you are replacing so much experience um, starts in in the secondary, um, what are the conversations like around that, and what what do you what would you say are the biggest challenges associated with that? Um, the conversations around it are just get your job done. You know what I'm saying? It's it's not really any excuses that can't be made. You know what I'm saying? If you're not getting the job done, you're not gonna play. Um, so it's really just get the job done, you know what I'm saying? Know what you're supposed to be doing and, you know, don't throw an opportunity away. Um, and the the challenges that I've came with is just learning a new position. But, you know, Evan and Dre and those guys did a great job of pouring into me while they were still here, just with all the knowledge they have uh, from the situation they've been in. So I really, I feel comfortable uh, back there and, you know, I can't wait to kind of showcase that. Um, what are you looking for from both yourself and from the team this year? Uh, just to really take it one game at a time, man, and prove prove to people that uh, believe in us and, you know what I'm saying, support us right. You know what I'm saying? I'm not really 
here to feed off of negativity or anything like that, but all the people who have been super positive, you know what I'm saying, and have stuck with us through this really controversial and tough time, man. Uh, just give them really fun games to watch on Saturday, man. Send them home with a smile on their face every week. Jacob. You talked, kind of talked about the versatility of the defense there. Um, is there anything in particular that you look at through the offseason to say this is the calling card of, of the defense this season? It's a lot, man. It's a lot of positives, you know what I'm saying? Just for me to kind of nail it down to be one thing. But as always, we're really, really fast. You know what I'm saying? Just – Throughout workouts, just watching guys move around, run. All the speed training that we've been doing, we're really fast. And we're a veteran group, you know what I'm saying? For as many people that have left, we have a lot of guys who have played a lot of football. You know, Merlin's still here, Kyle's still here. Myself, I played a good bit of football here. You got Tamarcus, who has been excellent here. Uh, so we're a veteran group. Um, D-line is excellent, and we're really fast, so I'm excited. Michelle. Hey, Jordan, obviously with a lot of guys graduating on this unit, there's a lot of uh, room for maybe new guys to step up. Can you talk about maybe somebody that you thought made great progress over the spring, somebody, you know, who jumped out in your mind is maybe making the most improvement? Yeah, oh my goodness. I could probably, I could sit here and talk about my teammates all day, especially the guys in my room. Um, I would say Ed Woods, man. Ed grows and matures every single day and every aspect of being a football player. I'm um, just watching him this off season. Uh, he's just been taking his nutrition so seriously. He's been working super hard, been super locked in. So I think Ed has made incredible strides. Uh, Mason Williams is just every day, you know what I'm saying? Every day he surprised me. He's such a talented guy, but he's also such a great football mind. Um, so getting to top it up with him and play with him has been dope. Uh, obviously, you know, Edmo and KB, two guys that came in through the portal. Um, but have played a lot of football, have been really successful at other schools. I thought they came in and fit in like puzzle pieces, you know, both of them. I thought that they showed that they're more than capable, you know, of playing here and, and of uh, fitting the system well. So it's, it's a lot of guys. I could go on all day. Jordan, I know when, you, when people look at this defense, they look at the secondary maybe having, in comparison, less proven players in the linebacker and defensive line. But I think uh, it's probably uh, maybe – more true of the uh, safeties and the cornerbacks in terms of that uh, lack of experience. Uh, what have you seen from the safety group in particular uh, during spring practice and now in off-season workouts uh, that makes you feel confident for 2022 when it comes to that position group? Oh, man, I think uh, although we're, you know what I'm saying, people haven't played as many snaps here, we do have still a very experienced group. You got, you know, Chris, who came from Sanford. He was an All-American there. You know what I'm saying? You watch his film from Sanford. It speaks for itself, you know what I'm saying? Same thing with KB coming from Hawaii. KB is a top 25 safety projected on some boards, you know what I'm saying, to some people, you know what I'm saying? And then I think that, you know, you put that under the tutelage of, you know, Coach Fletcher. He's put a lot of guys in the NFL, you know what I'm saying? He's a great football mind. Coach Donnie at the helm uh, as the defensive coordinator, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I definitely I understand, you know, with Evan and Dre leaving people feeling that way. But when you look at the numbers and you really look at it and pay attention to football, that's not the case.